Hello, this is Benjamin Gordon, a fourth year MD PhD student at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Welcome to this video presentation on genes, loci, and alleles. We will be discussing important terminology in genetics. This video presentation is part of Survivors Advising Scientists educational program. Our mission is to create a bi-directional partnership that connects young investigators with cancer patients, survivors, research advocates, and allies to increase scientific literacy and engagement across the community. If you recall the previous video presentation on molecular biology, we learned how DNA codes for proteins. DNA nucleotides were the letters and genes were the sentences that provided instructions. While it's sometimes more complicated than this, for our purposes, we will define a gene as one DNA sentence that provides instructions for one protein. So, one gene, one protein. Further reviewing molecular biology, we learned in the previous video that DNA is a double helix structure packed into chromosomes so that they can fit nicely inside the cell nucleus. DNA uses its four nucleotides to code for different genes. When we are describing the DNA code, we are describing the genotype. When we are describing the physical characteristics as a result of the proteins made from transcription and translation, we are talking about the phenotype. For instance, eye color is an example of a phenotype. As one last review from the molecular biology video, DNA is transcribed into mRNA in the cell nucleus, and mRNA is translated into protein in the cell cytoplasm. The nucleus is represented by our SAS EP smartphone, where the DNA exists and can write text messages with its nucleotide keyboard, A, T, G, and C. The mRNA intermediate acts as the Wi-Fi signal that allows the DNA message to travel from the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm, where it's translated into protein by ribosomes. The genotype comes from the first steps of these processes, while the phenotype is more of a direct consequence of the last steps. During reproduction, one receives a chromosome from each parent, so that chromosome exists in pairs. 22 of these pairs are called autosomal chromosomes, and they are identical between sexes. These pair of chromosomes are numbered in sequential order by size, such as chromosome 1, chromosome 2, chromosome 3, and so forth. The 23rd pair is called sex chromosomes, and they differ between sexes with XX for females and XY for males. In total, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes for 46 total chromosomes. Each cell in your body contains these chromosomes. As mentioned earlier, chromosomes help organize our DNA like a filing cabinet. Apps on our smartphones act in a similar manner to organize all the data on our phone. Therefore, we will once again return to our SAS EP smartphone, which will again represent the cell nucleus. Each app on the smartphone will represent a pair of chromosomes. Chromosomes themselves are pretty extensive. So how do we know where to look when describing a specific gene on a chromosome? The genetic locus, or loci for plural, describes which part of the chromosome we are referring to. This is important because specific genetic messages are often found at specific loci. For instance, let's say we are interested in a gene responsible for hair thickness. Knowing the chromosomal number is not enough. We also need to know the location on the chromosome, or the locus. To find this gene, we open the Chromosome 2 app. Once we have the Chromosome 2 app open, we take a deeper dive to the locus to precisely discover the home of this gene. The locus is circled on the right. As mentioned previously, for each chromosomal pair, we inherit one chromosome from each parent. That means at any given locus, there will be two versions available, one inherited from each parent. We denote these differences by referring to alleles, which are variations of the same gene. Therefore, allele is a fancy word for a gene that lets us describe their potential differences between the chromosome we inherited from either parent. When alleles are identical, we call this homozygosity. When alleles differ, we call this heterozygosity. After opening chromosome 2 app in the figure and travel to hair thickness locus, we see the allele can exist in two different forms, the red allele and blue allele. The phenotype of hair thickness will take into account both alleles. Let's connect this to cancer. You may have heard of the BRCA carrier mutation. 
which increases one's lifetime chance of developing breast and ovarian cancer. To get to BRCA1, we need to open the chromosome 17 app and then find the BRCA1 locus. BRCA1 is a tumor suppressor gene that tells our cells to repair broken DNA. Ideally, in both chromosomal pairs, we would like an identical homozygous message to repair DNA. However, if one has a mutation on one of these chromosomes, one of the alleles is sometimes non-functional. While this does not guarantee cancer will form, it increases the probability since we are now relying on one allele instead of two. You can think of these alleles as handrails while walking downstairs. Sometimes holding onto just one handrail is enough, but holding onto two handrails will decrease the probability of falling. A question to consider, what is the advantage of having pairs of genes and chromosomes instead of having just one copy of each gene? Thank you for taking the time to review video three in the series. Please make sure to check out video four on when things go wrong. We would like to thank everyone involved in the creation of these videos, including the University of Illinois Cancer Center and all the research and patient advocates that assisted in the review of these modules.